other Eastern Conference game we got going Atlanta Hawks versus the Chicago Bulls. Right now, the Hawks catching three points, uh, plus 130 on the money line, total sitting at 223. Man, as much as I don't like taking the Bulls as a favorite, I, I'm just skeptical of this Hawks team uh, at all. I mean, it, Trey Young is not working out on this team. I'm just very skeptical. You look at the record with and without Trey Young. With Trey Young, they're 22 and 32, 10 games above, uh, under 500. With uh, without Trey Young, they were 500, 14 and 14, and they were averaging almost uh, 9.3 less points. So they were scoring 9.3 less points per game, and they were winning a lot more games. Like I think he really has kind of turned into a liability in this career. If you want to counter by saying, "Hey, I, I don't think the Bulls should be laying three points against anyone." I get that, but man, I'm just super skeptical of this Hawks team in general. So I'm locking up the Bulls at home, getting it done, laying three points. Again, Hawks 14 and 26 ATS this season as a dog. And a lot of those stats I wasn't applying uh, when Trey Young was out because it did feel like a different vibe. But now that he's back, I don't know. He certainly could go off. I'm betting against it tonight. Chris, how say you? Yeah, first of all, thanks. Thanks, Alfonso. You you are an OG. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I um, I don't think the Bulls can be spotted three points, Sean. But uh, that's you know, so I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go against you tonight. Fair just argument. Because, I mean, I don't really trust either one of these teams. Uh, but I will say the Atlanta Hawks at least looked a lot better in most of March. Now I know Trey Young is back. He just came back recently. We saw them lose six straight games to end the regular season. But uh, you know, I think that Quinn Snyder and the Hawks know, right? Like they, they were locked into that 10th seed. Not much they were gonna do from there. But I like what I've seen from this team recently. They were as high as 11th in net rating at a point in March, just playing much better defense, much more physical defense. We saw them take out the Celtics twice, two games in a row that they faced them. And, and a lot of that was because of that physicality. Like Boston was clearly like kind of unsettled by how physical their defense was in that contest. And then the star power of DeJounte Murray is, is finally starting to show up, right? He's had some great games. Uh, he's very poised in big moments and low key. The Hawks might be the best play in tournament team ever at this point. I know it's just been a few seasons, but they're yeah. three and no, they booted the heat. Last, well, they didn't boot the heat, but they beat the heat last year in the play in tournament in their first game against them. Uh, and Trey young. Yes. Uh, he is the X factor in this game. No doubt about it. But let's face it. Right. Trey young has also had big, like phenomenal moments in these situations. We remember a few years ago at Madison Square Garden against the Knicks. He led his team in that and was just dropping threes all over the place. That's going to be a big difference, I think, in this game because the Bulls, not a great three pointing team, haven't been great to end the season. And their offense as a whole, like, right, like they have some talent there, obviously, right? DeMar DeRozan is their best scorer. Colby White, eh, he's a pretty good scorer, but 44.7% from the field this season. Uh, where it really drops off is their second unit and their bench. They're 29th in offensive efficiency, and they're a very good defense with their bench players, but that offense really, really falls off. And you got a Hawks team who's kind of coming together here. You talk about coaching disparity, like coaching talent. Yeah. Uh, I would take Quinn Snyder over Billy Donovan 100 times out of 100. I mean, Billy Donovan hasn't been able to figure out and unify this Bulls team since 2020, since he's been there. Uh, it's just been a shit show for me from the Chicago Bulls. Now, I will say, Sean, in your in your defense, the Bulls, when they step up, can be really good, right? Like, look at what they did against the Knicks the other night, taking them into OT, a game that the Knicks really wanted to win at MSG. You just don't know what to expect from Chicago. But if I'm getting three points with the Hawks, I'm going to take them in this situation. And I do think this total is too high. We've seen the Hawks slow down since Trey Young left. I know he's back, but again, Defensive intensity is going to be throughout this game. Uh, and and unlike the teams that we saw last night, when you have such stingy defense going on, you need great shooters to keep that score going, right? To keep the scoreboard lit up. Not as many great shooters in this game. You got Trey Young, you got DeMar DeRozan, but I think these two teams are going to sit back and rely on their defense in this one too. And the pace is really going to drop at certain moment, moments. So give me under 223. Give me the Hawks. Hate to go against Deshaun, but man, these Bulls. I, I can't trust them as far as I can throw them. No, no. I, I think what you, uh, the point you brought up that scared me is the coaching edge uh, who I do like Quentin Snyder over Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan does feel a bit uh dead man walking. Uh, we'll see if that, you know, what kind of motivation level these bulls 
uh, have. And then the the record in the play in games, it sounds silly, but we saw last night with the Lakers who are now LeBron three and O in the play in tournament. The guy who is like, this is stupid. We don't need this. He's seemingly benefited from the most. I did see someone say LeBron three and O in the play in Jordan would never, um, which is a pretty funny line uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, I, I see the counter, but I, I'll still, I pulls it home. I, I still, uh, I'm still locked in noops. What do you got here? You got some player props you like in this matchup? Yeah, I'm not sure of much in this game. I am sure that I'm not going to watch it. And I am sure that I'm glad Sean <laughs> mentioned play in tournament really? history. Cause you are correct. There are three teams in the history of the play in tournament. This is the fourth season. We've had it in this format. Minnesota's qualified twice. Atlanta's qualified twice. The Lakers have qualified twice. So if Atlanta can find a way to get into the playoffs, they will be the play in tournament historical champion or something. I don't know. Trey young has as many wins in the play in tournament as anybody possibly more. Oh, I don't know. I have this game's going to be a mess. Uh, the Bulls have been uh, just hot and cold all year. Uh, you go b- look up and down their schedule. They'll kick the crap out of a good team, get the crap kicked out of them by a bad team, then beat another good team, lose another bad team. Uh, I, I don't know what to do with them. I think the Bulls have the better roster. They've got home court advantage. That should be enough. Uh, it's just going to be a mess of a game. Uh, again, as I look at the player prop market, uh, there are two players here who I don't think have been properly adjusted for what we've seen, not only with the change of their usage, but what tonight is going to require of them. Nikola Vucevic's rebound total is 11 and a half. Hey, he really hasn't been getting close to that. His minutes are becoming less and less and less every single game. He's not shooting well. He can't defend. He's going to be tough to keep on the court tonight with a Hawks team that can go small, that does have some aggressive big men. I mean, Clint Capella is a nightmare for Nikola Vucevic in terms of what he wants to do and what Vucevic is not interested in doing. So I think his minutes are going to be down. I think he will struggle to get rebounds in the minutes he is on the floor. Give me under 11 and a half rebounds for Nikola Vucevic. And then DeAndre Hunter has had a couple of high scoring games over the last couple of weeks, but uh, you go back and look, those are overtime, double overtime games. They're games in which uh, there was injuries to Jalen Johnson. They were really leaning on him a lot more. I expect again tonight, we'll see him back to his lower minute load somewhere in the low thirties as opposed to the high thirties. And he's going to be asked to chase around DeMar DeRozan and Kobe White all game. He's not going to have a lot of time or energy to put points up here on the board. At the same time, those guys are pretty solid defenders who will be on Hunter himself. 16 and a half points is about two and a half almost three too high and as I start to look at my numbers. So Vucevic under 11 and a half rebounds, Hunter under 16 and a half points. I won't see a minute of it. I look forward to checking the box score when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Late night, late night. If you're on the East coast, so lock it up for noobs uh, Vucevic under 11 and a half rebounds, Hunter under 16 and a half points. I'm on the bulls minus three and Chris likes the Hawks plus three and the under 223. Yeah. I, I, as you guys laid it out, I do think the case for the under is uh, pretty solid there, especially with the pace. 